I'm here with uh, Mr. Mohamed Minaman, President of the Asian Football Confederation. Standards in Asia leagues vary considerably, and attendances has been at times inconsistent. Why is that, and how can you help with that? Again, you know, in the past, we were looking to all our 46 members association from the same angle, from the same point of view, and we thought, actually, what is good for Japan is good for Qatar and good for Nepal, for example, good for Guam. This is actually the, 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 the view where we're looking to the football when, when we were organizing football in Asia. Now we have categorized our national association to three levels in minimum. And we have actually started our top football with 10 countries in Asia, that is Japan, Korea, South Korea, I mean, China, Australia, uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, uh, uh, Qatar, uh, Singapore, uh, and Uzbekistan. These are the top countries in Asia in terms of better uh, infrastructure, better economy, better football standards. And here where we started to, to uh, uh, say something like, you know, professionalizing the game, professionalizing the, 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 the clubs, the leagues, uh, insisting about high criteria. Then we have another two, two uh, what you call the uh, category in Asia. So where, what you are seeing today, actually, you see that there are top football in Asia with high criteria, very high criteria uh, requirement. And there are another two levels what I will say in the middle, between the, between the professional and the amateurism, and the third one is mainly for amateur uh, countries, amateur football. If you were to leave the AFC now, what would uh, your legacy be? Uh, well, I'm actually, first of all, I'm not, uh, never worked uh, singly, you know. I mean, we, we, I work within a team. And whatever has been achieved so far, it is a teamwork. It is a team. Uh, it is, it is a, uh, a team legacy. After all, football is about you know about a team, not about uh, individuals. I believe in this six, seven years, we all in AFC has uh, better uh, uh, you know uh, improved the game. We have established Vision Asia as a developing tool for all aspects of football, being administration, being coaching, refereeing, grassroots, or clubs, or anything. Uh, we are proud of launching uh, our professional league uh, football. We are happy, you know, to see that also we have insisted about improving the environment where the football has to be played on things which in the past also were be taken in a grant for granted. If you are playing in the grass or you're playing in the mud state, uh, field, it is, it is the same. Today it is not the same. Naturally, you are looking very much to the comfort of the fans and the comfort of those people who are attending the game and playing, uh, playing the game. I will not say it is, it, is, it is sort of legacies, but I think, you know, we, we, we think that uh, we have introduced the modern game uh, in, in, a, in a very modern organization. You think that technology can bring progress to football? And what should it role be? Uh, well, it is yes and no. I mean, really, you know, maybe it's, uh, I, part of me is, is very conservative and would like to see the game the, 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 the way and it is introduced to me when I was a kid, when I was, a, when I was young, you know. And, and some part of me is also uh, what you call a liberal or modern, where I can see that, you know, the game has, you know, improved a lot. It is very much now speedy, where uh, I believe that a referee himself cannot actually cope with the incidents of the game, you know, and he might be needed uh, to be supported by, by the technology, especially, you know, when 
games are uh, goal is goal or not goal, cross the line or, do, or, or did not cross the line. This is something now, you know, very tapping very quick. And maybe the human eyes and the human abilities is not able to actually to identify the, the incident immediately. So maybe, and I'm still, I'm still saying maybe, we need the technology to support our referees. But naturally, we don't want, or at least myself, I don't want to see that the technology is replacing the, uh, the human uh, aspect in the game. I don't want to see that, you know, we are playing Atari or something like that. You know, I think the, the human maybe can be assisted by a certain limit of, uh, of technology to cope with the, with the modern football. Uh, at Golda Khan, we believe that through football, we can unite the world. Do you think that by bringing the quarter in the World Cup in Qatar in 2022, we can uh, help bring in the peace in the Middle East? This is actually uh, uh, maybe uh, one unique role only football can play to bring peace and the disturbed uh, regions. Yes, I, I do believe that the strategy of the bid of Qatar is based on how to bring peace in the Middle East, which tools they have to use. Uh, my country actually have so many initiatives to, to, um, to, to uh, uh, you know, to what you call, uh, call for peace in the world you know you can see that uh, our our uh, our government our leadership that uh, they were engaged in so many uh, peace talks within the region even within you know uh, we tried our best to intermediate between uh, palestine and, uh, and and israel you know we have we have a, a very active uh, uh, role in, in darfur recently which has been uh, hopefully uh, successful and we are willing actually as a small nation but to do much more for the for, for the Middle East now if this World Cup will come to, uh, to, to Qatar to the Middle East I think the football uh, you know communities worldwide are really putting the right tools in the hands of the people of the Middle East to achieve the, 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 the peace among, among the people. I think that such initiatives is not only will, will boost Qatar or will help Qatar, on the contrary, I think it's going to help, to help each and every individual uh, in, in, in the Middle East. And I hope you and me will be alive if 2022 has organized in, in, in Qatar, and you will see how this strategy was the right strategy for peace in the Middle East. Thank you. Do you have a favorite football player, and what is your most memorable goal? <laughs> My, maybe the memorable goal, most memorable goal is uh, Maradona's goal, and, 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 and <laughs> yes, and, and that the goal? That is, well, I mean, okay, you asked me. The referee was 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 whistled as a goal, you know. So I mean so that. You need a technology there. Okay, that's one. Uh, yes, I think you know for the recent time, you know, there is of course several, you know, whether they are within Asia or outside Asia. But as I told you, you know, football is international language, is international. Uh, Art, you know, my, my favorite player can come from my country, or from my uh, from my continent, or also from uh, other world. For the time being, I, I can see Messi is uh, is really the uh, the best uh, favorable player to me. The fact that there are still two Asian players in the quarterfinal of the Champions League, yeah. Park and Honda. And yesterday, I think he scored a very very uh, very important goal also. Yes. Yeah. I higher the profile of the players in Asia, correct? Sure, yes, of course, yeah, of course. And uh, 
this the same way we want the same way we want actually to see our players playing in, in the uh, important leagues in, in outside outside Asia. We'd like also to see the important players to play in Asia when they we are going to do all our best to provide such you know similar environments to to the best players in the world to to play in Asia. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It is indeed my pleasure to receive you here.